Okay, welcome everybody to the um, Penn State Great Valley um, Project Management Professional Information Session. We are very glad to have you here. Um, and I'm joined here today with Ed Weckerly. He's the Director of Professional Programs at Penn State Great Valley. So welcome, Ed. We're so glad to have you here. Ah, pleasure to be here, Alyssa. Wonderful. And Ed has uh, prepared a wonderful presentation today to kind of take us through the, um, you know, a, a couple of their PMP programs and explaining the differences. So, um, Ed, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you get started. Okay. All right. So, Alyssa, thanks for having me today. Um, this is really helpful. And I know that when people are actually looking at project management um, as a career, there's a lot of things that they have to take into consideration. And, and there's a lot of things behind it. Um, in working at Penn State, it'll be 11 years come this July. Um, I really have seen a number of students. In fact, I went back just recently and we have put through about 1500 students through our project management certificate during my time there. And that doesn't even count prior to. Um, but as I go through the program, I'm going to kind of tell everybody, you know, how we're connected with the Project Management Institute, why our program stands above and beyond uh, many in the area. And also, I, I take a lot of pride in the fact that our campus, the Penn State Great Valley campus, it's located in Malvern, PA, um, is by far uh, heads and shoulders above all the other campuses in the Penn State Commonwealth, uh, simply because we've been doing this so good for so long. So, um you know, with that, I'll I'll get started, and we'll we'll I'll take everybody on this little journey as to what how they want to go about things. So, first and foremost, I think it's really important to understand whenever you're looking into project management as a career, and you are looking down the road, whether to earn whether it's a certificate, whether to earn your PMP, your project management professional credential, um, it's really important that you see something like this, um, and that's the uh, authorized training partner seal. OK, that's actually given out to anybody who's actually considered an ATP for Project Management Institute, which is the global leader in project management credentialing. So if you have a PMP behind your name, that holds a lot of water. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and the importance of it in a few. But whenever you are looking around, this is really important because you need to earn what's called PDUs, professional development units, to actually be able to show Project Management Institute that you've had proper education around the topic. Um, I know that there are some, you know, consulting uh, firms and so forth, and maybe other organizations that that uh, at one time did offer the, um, the, it used to be called a registered educational provider seal for PMI, and then they didn't move forward with the ATP. But um, that's, that's problematic for people because if they end up taking something that's not actually has the seal on it, it doesn't count towards your training and it could be a lost opportunity where you've taken time and finances and everything and, and put it into something that's not going to count towards uh, putting it towards a PMP if that's what you plan to do. So that's really important to know up front. So basically, the Project Management Institute, as I mentioned, they're a global recognized entity. Um, back in fall of 2019, right before the pandemic uh, came upon us, um, in October, they hosted their, their project management uh, global conference right here in Philadelphia, and we actually took part in it. And a lot of it, uh, the things that came about was the recognition of, of what PMP stands for. Um, and, and I'm not going to go through every single single bullet point here. But again, one, one of the things that became very evident in that time period was they started looking a little bit beyond the tools that are typically used for project management, whether it's Microsoft Project, whether it's just the way you schedule your 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 um, you know your items that you need to, how you allocate your resources and so forth. And what they did is they they took away some of the 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 onus being on the the tools and went back and they focused on three pieces and that's the people the process and the business environment and the first one I want to really kind of focus is on is the people um, one of our 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 instructors in fact our lead instructor he actually will say it time and time and time again projects are people and when you actually look at things um, they 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 kind of tie back into leadership how the project management um, or project manager is actually very important along the role 
of working through the project. And, and it's not just about being able to know all the right answers to questions, but it's also about being able to get the right people in place at the right time, using, using the, the right resources. And um, again, of course, keeping everything <laughs> at least under budget or within budget on time and of, co of course, quality driven. That's the important piece there. Um, the other part is, you know, that when we talk about a process slash business environment, um, this is one of the things that they really start to emphasize because a lot of, of companies now um, are really uh, pushing the project, uh, you know, management style or the culture um, to, to make it more part of their organizational strategy or part of their culture. Uh, we work very uh, close to a, a company called Vanguard, which, you know, in, in, they're in the finance world. And they have actually embraced a very highly, um, you know, project management based culture where, you know, at one time, if you look back 10 to 15 years ago, a lot of projects were always hubbed out of the IT division of a, an organization or a company, especially when it comes to corporate. But that's no longer the, 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 the truth now. You know, you have a lot of people that are, you know, they can be working within different departments. They can be working uh, interdepartmentally. And they all tie the projects together. So it's really gone above and beyond that. So that's really nice to see. And, and PMI recognized that where, you know, these are no longer just going to be housed and run out of a specific division. It's going to be all encompassing across the full business environment. So as I show down the bottom of this slide right here too, uh, it, it talks about predictive or waterfall projects, which, you know, are, are your typical projects. The ones that just, you know, they, they, they go through from start to beginning, you're going to have, you know, your bumps in the road, of course, and 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 you take your your normal, um, you know, run it at whatever you need to do, and then the next piece comes in, and then you know it's fulfilled, and then it goes on and on after that. And then there's also something called hybrid, which is kind kind of like in between that uh, of one, you know, a predictive slash waterfall or an agile project, which agile now has also been a big focus where Project Management Institute has really kind of taken um, another push into, hey, we understand that that in the agile world, um, a lot of people are starting to say, okay, as our project is going along, there's going to be something that's going to come about. And rather than sidestepping some things and backing up, we're just going to keep on working through things by various means and, and whatever that could be. And it depends on the project, depends on the people you have working on the project. But Agile has been really embraced over that time. And it goes back to that global conference that I mentioned. They really talked about that as part of the push going into their PMBOK guide. It's it's the um, the project management's body of knowledge. It's almost like uh, would be considered their Bible that they go by. Okay. So moving forward, um, some factoids. I like sharing these, whether they're with uh, info sessions that we do for our own students or prospects. Um, or for anybody that we're talking about project management. And number one, fewer than a third of all projects are completed successfully. Now, again, you have to define what success is, right? If they're coming in, as I mentioned, under, you know, under or within budget, they're definitely having to come in on time. And especially with that quality uh, surrounding that. But a lot of people, you know, and, and when you sit through a certificate program, you know, and I'll tell you a little bit about this in the, in the next few minutes, but there's a lot of times when, you know, there something happens along the lines of a project. Uh, you know, think of a strip mall. If you're building out a strip mall and there are certain things that have to be done, you know, you're not going to be bringing in the people who paint before you bring in the people to put up your drywall. You know, there are certain things that have to come. But what happens if, say, God forbid, a hurricane hits? or something happens that you cannot get materials or something is caught up in, you know, we've been seeing supply chain issues over the last few years. What happens if? So there's a lot of things that go back and and, and that kind of ties back as to how a project can be successful or not. So the other piece is project managers actually spend about 90% of their time and they communicate to a ton of people. And I just have team leadership suppliers, customers here, you know, um, it goes a little bit beyond that, folks. You know, you, you're you're looking at project managers again, who are probably, you know, communicating with a number of people through various parts of the day. Again, getting things in line for the next segment of the project that has to take place. But the one focus that I like seeing here is not just so much the team and not having to report back up to leadership, and and even working with the suppliers. But it's the end user, it's the customer, because that's the person who 
has to really put that stamp of approval on the project once it's done. So that's the important thing. Um, right here, they're not required to know everything, but they should be asking the right questions. And that holds true across with any project manager. Again, they may not know what kind of blends of paint to put on certain walls, but guess what? They should be asking the people who are in charge of the painting specifics on that supply or, or that, 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 um, strip mall that's being built that they could be actually be able to go in and, and say, okay, these are going to be the right colors or the right, you know, types of paints to use in certain situations. So it, again, it varies, you know, when you're looking at software engineering, it can also be like bringing in the first, the, the right people for networking purposes and so forth. So again, it goes and differs across all different projects. Um, you know, here's the other thing too, and a lot of people don't realize this. Um, and, and the two bullet points that I have here is number one, you know, people are actually, they could have the title of a project manager, which is great. And that's, that's the first step, right? You know, once you actually land a role as a project manager, but only barely half of them are actually certified. And what I mean by that is actually holding that PMP credential. That's the one where you do sit for the project management Institute exam. And again, we're going to get into that in a few minutes, but that's the big difference. Now, what you see underneath that is actually up to date as of 20, the end of 2022, that for folks that actually go on and hold or, or actually earn and hold on to a PMP, what they do is they actually are looking at a 25% increase in their salary. You know, your, your earning potential without a doubt goes up if you actually hold a PMP versus not. Now, again, some people may think, well, you know, what kind of undertaking is this? You know, how much is it going to cost? And to be honest with you, it, you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't realize that is very cost effective and, and the return on your investment is huge when it comes to that. So what I did is I put together this slide and I wanted to kind of balance that out, pursuing career as a project manager and, and, and think about it as a certified project manager, right? So here's the thing. If you have a four-year degree, okay, and you want to eventually sit for the PMP, there's a couple pieces that you have to hit here. You know, the four-year degree you need to show on a resume when you, you actually apply to sit for the exam is 4,500 hours of leading and directing projects. Now I know, I don't want to say that PMI has been a little bit more lenient, but if you have project in the title of some of the roles that you've held and you've been working probably eight to 10 years, you should be good to go, especially with the four-year degree. Now keep in mind, if you don't have a four-year degree, because this always comes up as a question uh, from people that are looking at, you know, eventually whether they're taking our PMP exam prep or our project management certificate is what happens if I don't have that four-year degree, Ed? What is the difference? And it is a little bit different where you would have to show that you've been working on projects or leading projects, directing projects for 7,500 hours. So that's the big difference there. Now, if you again, if you've been in the industry for a while, you've been working on projects, Sometimes it's not even a matter, it's just a matter of just putting the application through, pushing your resume in, and, and you're good to go. And as I mentioned right here, as you can see, you you know, you do have to earn up to 35 PDUs. Okay. And what that encompasses, and, and there's there's two ways we're gonna uh, broach this subject as we go through some of our, our next few slides. You know, we do have a PMP exam prep course that actually covers all 35 hours so or 35 pdu so you can actually sit but i will say this you know if people look at our project management certificate because you know the methodology is there and you're learning um, by looking at um you know project management uh, approved materials you're going to actually earn 84 pdus but you do have to show that you actually have 35 pdus either way so one way or another you have to actually educate yourself a little bit more on project management by the way of the pmi methodology to be able to sit for the exam. Now here is sitting for the exam itself. It is a four hour timed exam. Um, for those of you who've taken a GMAT before or you know TOEFL exams and stuff like that, it, this is pretty much the same way. You are sitting in, um, they're, they're actually doing them still online. They actually do them in person now. They, they've gone back to that, but they are 200 uh, questions, 25 pretest unscored plus 175 scored. So. You know, this is not going to be something that you're just going to sit down, blow out in half an hour and get up and leave. You know, it is going to be a little bit work. But again, if you are educated in um, their methodology, you should be just fine. Um, the exam fees. And here's the other difference. I always mention to people that are looking to jump into our program. I tell people this. If you are looking 
down the road to, to actually sitting for the PMP, there's two ways of doing this. If you become a PMI member and the membership fee is only $139 a year, if you become a member, you get a free PMBOK guide, you know, and that's good because you're going to need that for our program anyway. So if you get that out of the way, you get the free book. It's almost like getting it almost at cost. Um, but what it, you do see is in the bullet point above, your exam fee to sit actually drops dramatically. I mean, you're saving 170 bucks right there. So that's going on if you do decide to go, you know, on and, and sit for the exam. And and again, the, here's the other thing too. What's really important, and a lot of people think, oh, well, once I have it, so it this is a little bit uh, unlike whether you know you go and you earn a master's degree or you earn a bachelor's degree, where you hold on to that forever. You never have to re up that or. But once you earn a PMP credential, right, it's really important that you have to actually go and earn 60 PDUs over a three-year cycle. Now, some people might say, oh, how do I do that, Ed? You know, what, what's the next steps? PMI releases a number of great videos where once you become a member, once you're, you know, you're in that three-year window, they start sending you stuff automatically to say, hey, if you want to pick up 10 PDUs, you can take this training. You know, it could be on Project Risk, it could be on Agile, it could be on Scrum Master, things like that. So there are plenty of ways of picking that up. Okay. So next slide. What we're going to do is first, I want to talk about the project management professional or the PMP exam prep course. And one of the things that I, I like talking about here is, is simply this, because I, I think people tend to get a little confused because I, I, I say it with, with, you know, kindness in my heart here. And I tell people, because I've had many people say, Hey, Ed, I can't wait to go get my PMP. I see that the PMP prep course starts and I want to jump into it. The first question I ask is how much project management experience have you had? And if somebody says, Oh, I've been in the, you know, in the industry for 10 years, been working on project. I'm like, great pass. Go, go take the, uh, go take our course. It will definitely set you up for success. No doubt. But if somebody comes back and says, well, I'm kind of new to project management. I've only been working. I, I graduated a couple of years ago. I've only been working with projects maybe a year. That's when I hit the brakes and say, okay, this is definitely not for you. Because number one, again, let's go back to what I talked about on the prior slide. You need to have that, that, that resume when you go to actually apply to take the exam. You know, um, that's important. If you don't have those hours, they're going to kick it back and say, now we're, we're going to deny your application. And, and you don't want that to happen. So you do want to have the resume to match. Okay. But if you do, you know, we actually do offer a fantastic project management prep course um, or a PMP prep course, I should say. Uh, what we do is we, we scale that out over 10 sessions. It's 34, 35 hours and they are all done remotely. And what you're doing is you're going in. Um, I know that the ones that are coming up, it runs from September 13th to November 15th. It goes from 5.30 to 9 p.m. Now, may seem like a lot, but I will tell you this. In the folks that actually have been taking this in a remote delivery for the last couple of years, they say that the time flies. Because number one, when people sign up, what we will do is we actually give them an access code where they could go in and they actually download all the materials. Now they could start reading ahead if they want, but I will assure you, you definitely want to have guidance from the two instructors. We actually have two people that co-teach this, um, absolute rock stars. They know the PMP exam prep inside and out. Of course, they are both PMP certified and then some, um, and not to mention they work in the world of project management. So they are very ingrained in doing two things. Number one, they don't want you just to look at the material and go, okay, I'm going to remember this and go take the exam. It's not about that. They really want to kind of sit there and say, okay, how are we going to set you up for success? So that's the first part. They want to, they want you to be successful because your success is in, is, ends up being our success, success. You know, we like to see our students come back after taking a PMP prep course and go, hey, Ed, or whoever their instructors, hey, look, I have a PMP behind my name. And that's, that's, that's fantastic to see. So that's the first thing. Secondly, they want to make sure that you're ready to take it. And there's been times where our instructors have gone back and said, hey, listen, rather than going through the application process, or if you've already applied, take a little bit more time, study up a little bit. They work with you on that. And they're, they're going to be able to kind of tell you whether or not you're ready uh, to sit for the exam. You know, again, the good thing is they will work on, um, you know, redrafting your uh, resume if needed. Because as I mentioned, it's really important when you go to apply for your PMP, there are certain buzzwords that they're going to pick up on your resume when you submit this electronically that 
If they don't see, they may kick that back for some reason. But our instructors will work with the people to the, the students to actually get them to be very proficient in the resume resume that they um, they upload, and of course with the learning. Okay, so that's the first part. I think that that's that's one of the ways where some people opt to do to go simply because they're already ready. They've had that experience, and they again they know how much that PMP credential is going to mean. So when we look at the project management certificate program, okay, now that's a little bit different where, and again, I might jump around a little bit on this one. Again, we're an ATP for PMI, which is great, but here's the difference. Rather than it being one 10 week course, this is going to be a series of four courses that are seven weeks each. And I will say on the next slide, I'm going to actually go around. I'm going to show you on, on how, um, what we get into in the classes, but Keep in mind, uh, one of the things that we like to tell people is that these courses must be taken in order because they are, are specifically planned. And, and you're also going to hear why, because it's very important to understand that when we put together this program, and this is one of the reasons why, as I mentioned in the very onset of our program here, that we've run easily 1,500 people through this program is because we have it set up in a way where they're learning and working on a project and they're able to take what they're learning. And the best part about it is that they can actually apply what they're learning the next day in, in, in work. It's not that they have to wait after a seven week course. It's not that they have to wait after an eight month program. We've had student after student after student come back to us and say, hey, Ed or Adam or Kyle, guess what? What I learned in class Thursday night or Tuesday night or whatever night of the week it was, I was literally able to go into work the next day and start planning and uh, this new project with my team using what we just talked about last night in class. Guys, that's the best part. That's that's where the proof is in the pudding when, and you you actually see the value of what the program does bring to um, the table for you, okay? Um, as I have also um, mentioned here, again, project management is everywhere now and so many organizations are getting involved with it. We've seen people in banking, healthcare, facilities management, you you look at manufacturers, although they're, they they kind of tilt more towards the lean and agile side, but they still work on project management. So many people are doing it now. And so many people are using this as a, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, I hate to say it's a skill set that's like a one fit all, you know, it, it goes into pretty much everybody's job because everybody at one point or another is going to work on a project. It's just a matter of how, how deep you may be working on the project or what your role is. But again, this certificate program is built so you can actually understand the project process all the way from beginning to end. So I, I, I say this, and I again, I take a lot of pride in this because I think that this is really important. This is probably besides our faculty, this is the thing that sets our program aside from everybody else's in the area where people have come and I've actually had students come back and say, this was the best part of the course. And it's because in your first class of the project initiation and planning course, okay, our instructor is going to break up the class into teams. And you may be on groups from, could be four people, could be up to six people, depending on how many people enroll. And what we do is we allow the teams to then choose a project of their liking. And what I mean by that, we have a list, but we also... We have had companies actually send a group of five people, six people, and they come to the class and go, hey, we're working on this, you know, project XYZ over here in our work. Can we work on that here? And the instructors are like, absolutely. I think that would be great because, again, you're doing the hands-on piece and then you're able to actually go back to work and kind of put the that into motion. So that's really helpful. But the good thing is you get the very, the, the hands-on feel, okay? And the cool thing is once these teams are formed, you actually take the whole team and they're going to work on that specific project through all four courses of the program. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. I've been teaching for more than 15 years and I know, you know, I don't really have time to kind of, you know, piece classes together like that. But I know that other students, whether they've done master's degrees, whether they've done bachelor's degrees, whether we, we have some people actually have doctorates to come back and do our program. They have never seen a program like this because it's neat how they could stay within the same team, within the same project, and keep on working together. Very collaborative. Um, there's a lot of friendships made. There's a lot of, uh, you know, that that camaraderie that you're looking for uh, being in class. And, and you know, it's really funny because um, I had somebody ask us this before and they said, you know, 
I haven't been to school in a long time. I, I, I you know, I, I went to college years ago and, and I'm coming back and I really want to learn about project management, but I'm kind of, you know, on the fence with it. You know, I, I don't know how I'm going to make out with this. Trust me when I tell you, everybody's pulling their weight. Everybody comes in with it and everybody's, you know, remember everybody is in this program because they want to be in the program. Nobody's being voluntold to come into the program. People are actually, you know, putting money out of their own pocket or their company's paying for them to come. Um, and what they're doing is they're getting something out of it. You know, they want to be able to learn about project management. And they want to be able to apply it to what they do. Um, so that's really, really, really helpful. Um, part of the grading, and I, and I have that down here where, you know, I mentioned teams actually present their, their deliverable and whatever that could be. It, it changes from course to course, but Say, for example, in the first class, they're going to talk about, you know, they had to build out their project charter and their, their communication plan. Well, they have to actually deliver that as a team on week seven. And so every week seven of all four courses is pretty much all the teams reporting out whatever they're doing on their projects. There's no exams. There's no major quizzes, nothing like that. There are some some uh, checkpoints in learning that we actually deliver to the students. So, you know, if anybody, again, is looking to go on to the PMP exam prep, uh, course, or to go sit for the PMP, we start talking about some of those, those questions that you're going to probably be seeing on the exam down the road too. So we kind of, you know, do that a little bit. The other nice thing about this being fully remote is the fact that, you know, years ago when we had the shift and we, you know, the pandemic hit, um, we had to go to a remote delivery. And, and one of the things that I was very, very happy about is the fact that our faculty that actually teach in this, they're doing something at companies every day. These are not full-time faculty. These are people that actually live, breathe, eat, sleep project management. They're working in that world. Many of them very familiar with platforms like Zoom, WebEx, you know, other things like that, where, well, Teams, you know, Microsoft Teams. But the nice thing is they were actually able to take our coursework and be able to convey it to a deliverable for the students that was very manageable for their time, number one. Number two, it was very engaging. That was, that. that's a big thing because being engaged for a three hour window, you know, one night a week, that's a big deal. But the one thing that they did was they said, okay, the use of the breakout rooms is going to be really cool because what we could do is we could take their teams and, and they divvy up the teams and they'll, what they'll do is they'll push them out to the breakout rooms. And now the teams have time to work on that deliverable every week during class up until week seven. So do we expect people to be working, um, you know, outside that three hour window once a week? They could, you know, it depends on the team. There are some teams, guys that, and I'm not going to lie, there are some teams that actually say, okay, for the first two hours in class, we're going to lecture, we're going to have a lot of, it's, 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 the, the courses are also driven on a lot of discussion. But the other piece that's very, very important is the fact that, you know, when the teams decide to to go to the breakout rooms, some teams just sign out and they're like, okay, we're done for the night. We're going to meet on Saturday morning. We'll put together a Zoom call that, and that could happen too. So it, it, it kind of, it, it, I guess it's based on who's in the group and, and, you know, what their level of how long have they been on Zoom all day and, and so forth. So, uh, but that could vary. But that this is definitely one of the best pieces of the certificate program. And again, one of the ones that actually makes us stand above the rest. So on this next slide, this is going to be the, the as you see it labeled, the, the project management life cycle. But one of the things that I, I like to talk about here is this kind of walks you around the all four courses. You know, we look at the first class on the, on the top left-hand side, the initiation planning. Again, that's when you start looking into, you know, what a project manager does and what the responsibilities are. You know, you start looking at all the goals you're looking to set, the objectives, how you're going to start choosing your resources and looking at them. You start building out your communications plan and your project charter. Then what you do is you take your project you're working on, you slide it over to the top right, your scheduling integration. And that's when you start looking at how the project activities are going to start looking throughout, whether it's a multitude, whether it's just a you know a small number, it could be it could be it could vary in length based on the on the project. And again, you're going to start building in your start and end dates. You're going to be looking at your WBS, which is the work breakdown structure. And you know um, what you do is you tend to start looking at what are some of the things that can happen that can kind of start like making the project go maybe off track somewhat. So your critical path method is going to be very important. But one question came up before. 
And I want to assure everybody here is that somebody asked in, in one of our sessions before, do I need to know Microsoft Project to be in this program? Absolutely not. There are other things that our, our in, instructors will introduce you to for the scheduling integration. Some use just you know, basic spreadsheets, um, but there's also a free downloadable software that they will guide you to. So the project, the team itself can actually use that instead. So again, you don't have to be proficient on the tools themselves. You will learn as you go, okay? Then what you do is you take that learning and then you'll do that deliverable and then you move it into the cost and control. And the cost and control class, I, I tell everybody, you know, this is the nuts and bolts. This is like, you know, when you start looking at the uh, the number side. And that's when you start looking at the procurement of the project, you know, what's done, what's how much is left in the budget. You have to look at your cost estimations and everything else in between, because this is going to be, this is going to come into play as to how, you know, you're going to set off other mechanisms to say, okay, if this is, if this part's done, this is paid. Okay. Now we can move forward. And now everything else gets set back. And sometimes you're even going to go back to thinking in the last class, like, okay, well, when we were looking at our WBS, how was that affected? Are we on track? Are we still, you know, on time? And are we going to be able to deliver this to the customer in a timely fashion? So you take that. And then the last thing is you go into the risk and change management course, okay? And that's when you start looking at, you know, the what ifs. And I know in that class, once in a while, our instructor will throw a monkey wrench into the team's project and go, okay, say if you're building out that strip mall, they'll say, oh, you got held up because snow hit the area for two weeks. And then they go, oh, and they have to rethink that. And and, and again, this is this is what happens in real world, right? So it, it's, again, it's, it's that hands-on piece where now the team has to think, okay, how do we mitigate through those risks, you know, or, or you should be thinking about even earlier in your, your, your program, you know, some of the risks are already involved, but what happens if something does happen now? How do you handle that? How do you handle the conflicts? You know, there's also quality and ethics that are built into being a project manager. And then finally, and, and lastly, that's when you actually close out your project as a whole. And so as you can see, you're going from inception all the way through project closeout. Um, and that would be the last deliverable, and uh, that would be the four course cycle that we go on here. So as you can see, we have a summer program that's going to be built out. Um, that's going to be starting in May. Uh, this is going to be running on Tuesday nights from six to nine, and that's going to be remote delivery. And as you can see, our first class, the initiation and Planning is going to be on uh, May 9th to June 20th. Then we're going to be rolling into the scheduling and integration. That's June 27th to August 15th. The costing and control will be August 22nd to October 3rd. And then the risk and change risk and change management is going to happen from October 17th to December 12th. Now, if May is too soon of a timeline, we will be offering another program come fall. And that goes fall 23 into spring 24. Starts the end of August. Um, and then we'll roll into the following May. But I'll be happy to share any of those details on that as we build that out. <clears throat> and there's a couple of things here. Number one, a lot of people don't realize that these, not only are they approved by PMI, these are approved courses in the Penn State system. So even if you've never taken a college course, even if you've never been to Penn State, doesn't matter. These four courses are going to actually show up on a Penn State transcript. So if you need them for an employer or if you need them for, you, sometimes you may have to show PMI to show proof that you've taken the classes. Um, on occasion, they'll ask for it. You can actually order a transcript and it's going to be there. Like all four of those courses will show there. And on top of that, one of the other things that we've built out over the last year is we actually have built a great partnership with Credly. Um, they are the... the I'm going to say they are the namesake in, in you know, this digital credentialing that, that people are seeing a lot on LinkedIn. And, and specifically, you know, we, we do it across all our programs, but we've added it to the project management um, program as well, because I know that it's very important for people to show what they're actually they've learned and, and what they've achieved. And and this is by no, you know, no stretch of the imagine something small, like you're actually in a program. And as you can see, you know, you're starting in May, you're ending in December. You know, it, it's a lengthy but it's it goes by very quickly. Um, you know, again, working in the teams and working with, uh, you know, as you become friends with other people, um, the classes go by quick. And you know, we want to make sure that at the on the 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 at the back end, you know, you're going to get your certificate in the mail. You're going to get your Credly badge. And what's nice about it is that you set you have something tangible to show for it for all that hard work. Okay, so 
Here's another piece, and 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 again, I I also I like talking about this because I I want to mention the return on the investment here. Um, people have asked this over and over and over again. How do you run these classes so inexpensively? You know, they're very affordable when you really look at it. Because when you when you balance it out, you hear Penn State, and some people might go, "Wow, is this the same kind of tuition as either undergrad or grad?" It's not, as you can see. Each one of the courses costs six hundred and twenty five dollars. We actually give a discount for uh, early registration. Um, I know that in working with Alyssa um, here, we we also will give a discount where we can help out as well. Um, there's only two books to buy for the whole four course program. So when you look at a nutshell, you know, and and I I always say this, and I know our you know I report to our chancellor at our campus, and I know that they. You know, they have a specific way of looking at this, but I, I tell people, you know, you're you're looking at four courses over the period of, you know, seven and a half, eight months, and you're going to pay less for all that than you would one graduate course. And when you look at that as your return on your investment, that is an amazing ROI. Uh, something, again, you have a lot to show at the end of it. You, you have, you know, the badge, the certificate and all that, but the most important thing here is you have the knowledge. And now you can actually go into in a work situation or take, if you're currently working, move that into something and say, hey, listen, I have this, this knowledge. I can put this to play, you know, and perhaps, and we've seen it a number of times, people get promoted based on these, having this certificate behind their name. Um, so it's something to ha hold on to. And, and you know, uh, again, we, we, we don't overcharge for things like this. Um, I think that when you wrap that up in, 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 all together. And on top of that, I, I, I want to go back to our faculty. You know, these people, none of them need to be teaching. I, and and they're all pretty busy people, but they're passionate about teaching project management. And they love seeing the students come in from all different industries, all different backgrounds, all different educational backgrounds. You know, right now, our remote programs are blowing up all the way across the United States. We've had people coming in from other countries now that have joined us which never would have been able to take these programs before. So they're seeing that and they're getting more excited because again, it, they like spreading the wealth. They're all, they have those credentials already and they want to see our students go on and earn them just as much. So here's the last thing that I, I, I do want to kind of mention. And, and, you know, something again, that, that nobody gets turned away from this program in that you don't have to apply to it. You don't have to pay an application fee. You just basically go in and you sign up for that first course. And once you lock into that project initiation and planning course, you know, we hold a seat for you for the remainder of the program. If you decide to stop out, we hope you don't because we don't see very much attrition at all. But if you decide to stop out for any reason, you can. But people sign up one course at a time. And the nice part about it is that, you know, you are kind of moving on, you know, moving through it and, and you know, there's, there's, you don't have to pay for the whole thing up front, um, you know, and one of the nice things about this, and especially for this group here, and, and again, this goes back to working with Alyssa and, and Nas Nationality Service Center is the fact that we will work with you to get you registered. I know we've recently gotten a few people registered for, for some things. Very easy, very simple process. And we pretty much try and take care of as much as that for you. And uh, we all we do is we ask you to show up for class and then, and, and, you know, stay engaged and have fun. That's the big thing, having fun in this program. So um, with that, I think that that is pretty much all that I need to cover. So uh, Alyssa, I'll, um, I'll, should I stop sharing now or? Um, you know, if you, if you just want to maybe keep your screen up so we can have people, um, you know, uh, make sure they take down your information. I think that's great. And um, I just want to confirm. So, well, first of all, thank you very much, Ed. What a wonderful presentation. Um, I think um, just just a couple questions before we close out. So I, I just wanted Absolutely. to confirm your location. You said you guys are in Malvern, right? Yes. Okay. That's located in Chester County, Malvern, PA. Yeah. Okay. Right. Awesome. And um, let's see. I wanted, and I think, I think um, we we definitely like went over this, but just one more time for the two options we kind of compared today. I just wanted to um, make sure that um, I understood the um, main requirements for each option. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go back and, and look at that. So yeah. for those that are looking to sit for the PMP exam prep course that we offer, okay, that would be someone who has at least three to five years of project management experience. They've been working in the project management field. They've been, you know, th so they're a little bit seasoned. You know, it's somebody that's mm -hmm. not straight out of college or somebody that's just jumping in and going, hey, I want to learn more about project management. We would we would definitely say, no, you, you, you're not ready to go to that set of, of going into that course yet. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, and again, it's somebody who, who has that resume that's also can kind of match and, and, and go sit for the exam after they take the prep course, where on the other hand, the certificate program is for anybody. And when I say anybody, um, uh, you know, it's funny, we had a young man who, who years ago, he reached out and this was even prior to the pandemic and he reached out and he said, Hey Ed, I work in road construction. And, you know, my boss actually told me to take this program because he said it was really helpful in him, you know, learning more about project management. He did it years ago. And here, you know, it, again, it was great that he, you know, somebody told somebody else about the program, which happens all the time. Um, but he was kind of, he was on the, on the fence because he's like, I started with this road construction company right out of high school. Like I, I, I've never walked into a college. Am I going to be underwater here? Am I going to feel out of sorts? Am I going to, and I said, okay, well, tell me what you did. And he told me his roles and he was managing a couple projects. Yeah. And I was like, you'd be a great fit. And he's like, really? And I said, yeah, you would. I said, simply because what you're doing, you're going to be able to take what you're doing and bring it into the classroom. I said, it's almost going to be like opposite of what we like seeing our students do where they're learning and then they go back to work. I said, there's going to be a lot that you could bring to that team that we talked about and bring to the project that you're going to be, you know, your, your duties that you do every day are going to be playing into this. So having a little bit of that experience, even though, and I hate to say it, he felt almost ashamed that he didn't have a college degree. And I'm like, look, there's you went into road construction. That that's an honest living. Like, Hey, I give you all props. I have a couple friends that are doing that and they're doing very well for themselves. So, you know, he jumped into the program. He did amazingly well. And, and it's funny because the, the project that him and his team worked on was a restaurant renovation where they, they renovated a, a, an entire restaurant from the ground up and the stuff that he brought to the team they came back and told me afterwards, they were like, he was blowing us away with some of the, the knowledge he had that we would never have thought of. So again, it's really good. Um, so it doesn't matter. You know, if you have people coming in from all different industries, all different walks of life, you know, it could be anybody. Um, again, we have, it's funny because we, we did a stat on this a little while ago, about 34% of our students for this certificate program do have master's degrees. Um Many of them already have bachelors, but but a number of them don't have a, a degree. Some of them have a JD. Some of them have a doctorate. It it's it goes all over the place simply because people have felt over the last ten years project management has done a one eighty, and people are trying to learn more about the actual the topic itself. So. Okay, awesome. Great. That's very helpful. I just wanted to, to kind of like sum that up for everybody again, just to make sure we we had sure. that all. Um, you know, sort it out. And then, so the application process, if they're not going to, you know, kind of work with, with, with our team to apply, they just sign up online. Well, they can do that. Anybody can just go right to our, our website and sign up by themselves. If we're going to work with people, you know, from, from, you know, your area, we, we would definitely help them. I, I know in the past we've sent over registration forms that we have the student fill it out, get it back to us, and then we sign them up. But yeah, it, it's a very easy process, whether you go right to our website and sign up and go, you know, again, you only have to sign up for that one class, and then you're just expected to sign up as you go. So very easy. Okay, great. Awesome. And um, I awesome so much. Uh, thank you so much for providing your contact information. That's that's great um, to to have that out there. Um, but all right, I think um, I think that's all of my questions. Your presentation really um, answered a lot of the the uh, thoughts that I had in mind. So um, thank you, Ed, for joining us today. It was absolutely a pleasure to have you. Um, and you know, for anybody who who has further questions about um, you know uh, the the PMP options at Penn State. Great Valley, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can contact Ed and, and, and get some of those answered. And um, he, he's been a great resource for, for Nationality Service Center. So thank you, great. Ed, and we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, Alyssa. It was a pleasure.